of reading news later. Exciting stuff coming up. By the way, baptism next Sunday. Oh, 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 oh yes, a bit more better than that. Exciting, isn't it? Baptism next Sunday, and uh, the mobile God wash will be rolled out and be parked right here. Uh, the water will be uh, warmed up a bit. But maybe we should test the uh, baptizee and see if he's empty. I think about Russia where you break the ice. Yes. That'll be warm, James. It really will. So that's next Sunday. And I'll tell you what else we've got to warm you up next Sunday. It's, it's soup Sunday. So you might want to miss out on that either, so bring a couple of bucks for a cup of soup. And uh, we're doing that periodically with our, our uh, hospitality and catering connect group, and they're going to put on good soup next Sunday, so don't miss out on that. The other thing that's in here is Wes Beavers. Good work. How many of you have ever heard Wes Beavers preach? Some of you might have read his books and haven't seen so he's, he's a long-time friend of uh, the Baldove Church, but it's 10 years. The last time he came, we were actually in at Baldove's Hall, the little hall down there at Baldove's. And this building was nearly, we were going to move in here like the next week. And we brought him up here and uh, there, there was no carpet down and there was no platform and there was really no power. We had a sort of a dodgy power lead out the back of the ground and here and put a light here. We were working around the building site sort of thing to show where's the place. And he's come back 10 years later. I'm going to preach here on uh, Sunday the uh, 1st of August in the evening service. So don't miss that. And on the other side, ladies, half to half coming up. So check it out. Check it out. Well, here we go. Uh, those of you in business know that the best form of marketing is word of mouth, right? You know that. Uh, you can spend the big bucks on advertising and marketing only to find that the guy down the road uh, is attracting way more business than you are, and he's spending virtually nothing on advertising. And if you're in business, you hate that. If you're spending the big bucks and he's not, and he's getting all the stuff. People uh, who do business with your competitor. Uh, that, that's doing well, that's not advertising, but the people are coming. Uh, they just love doing business there and, and they talk about the, the good experience that, uh, that they're having. Uh, it's favour and a good name. It's true in business and it's true of you, the individual. Uh, some people are, are, are living in the favour generally of all those around them. And, and it may seem to the casual observer or onlooker uh, that the person who has the good name and who is living in the favour of all of those around is just plain lucky. It could seem like that, but that's not necessarily the case at all. It isn't the case. Uh, in, in your Bible, there's the book of Ruth. And uh, when you start reading the book of Ruth, you find that Ruth is living in relative obscurity. Uh, there's no favour going on. There's no good name. Her husband has just died. Her father-in-law has just died. Uh, her brother-in-law has just died. And she finds herself as a, a foreigner in a strange land. That's at the beginning of the story. By the time you get to the end of the story of Ruth, it, it's, she's living in favor and, and, uh, and a good name. It's, all, it's just all going. You think, well, well, how did that happen? And uh, how it happened uh, was that she put her loyalties uh, in, in the right place. Uh, her, her, she was loyal uh, to the people that she should walk with. And you know, if you walk with the right people, and you think, how, how, everyone around saying, wow, uh, Ruth, you have such a good name and you are living in favor. And she gave birth to a son who ended up being the grandfather of King David. And from her very family, the Lord Jesus Christ was born. Favor and a good name. Proverbs 22 verse 1 should be on your screen coming up. And there's one we should all read together. Proverbs 22 verse 1. A good name is more desirable than great riches. Indeed, a good name will often bring great riches. That's the way it works. Here's another one for you. Ecclesiastes 7 1 coming up. A good name is better than fine perfume. It's attractive. It's attractive. The point is that a good name is valuable. Never underestimate the value of a good name and, and a good reputation. Uh, whether it's in business, the business has a good name, uh, uh, the, uh, the favor that accompanies that good name, uh, or the individual with a good name and the favor that, that, that follows that, uh, or, or the family, that family has such a good name. They are living in favor. Or the church, it, it's, it's no accident. It, it's not just good luck. That's what I need to tell you this morning. Luke 2, 32. And as Jesus grew up, you watch these words 
five and good names pop up all over the place. And as Jesus grew up, he increased in wisdom and in what? Favor with God and with people. Now, the, the wisdom and favor with God and with people was not simply just, well, said, well, he's God, so of course he would have favor. Well, you look at him nailed to a cross later on and say, just because he's God, he's got favor and a good name. It doesn't just work like that. He's got favor and a good name. I believe it's because of his parents sowing into his life. See, uh, the wisdom and the favor came through his humanity. He increased in, uh, in wisdom and favor. And, and I would believe that that investment came by his parents. I think they had something to do with it. Uh, parents, uh, you have something to do with whether your kids are going to uh, live in favor and have a good name. See, I, I think as we look at his parents, uh, they didn't do this, this investment in an overbearing, overprotective, enmeshed family kind of way at all, but in a way that invested good, godly principles into his life, and, and then they released him, and, some, and good parents are going to have to release your kids to pursue his destiny. Uh, uh, if the business, uh, the individual, the family, the church, uh, has favor and a good name, it's no accident. There's been some intentionality. 1 Timothy 3, 7 says of the church leader, uh, some of your translations, the pastor, must have a good reputation with outsiders. Uh, and and uh, since you say that, and I've said that to people, uh, well, uh, the leader, the pastor, uh, the church leader must have a good reputation with outsiders. And, and the church people and leaders say, well, what about the insiders? What about me? It isn't fair. <laughs> they have the Shannon Noel syndrome. Spring up there. And well, I just want to say, you chat to God about that. Because he wrote this book. And he's the one that said he should have a good reputation with outsiders. Favor and a good name. The business, uh, the individual, the family and the church. And my prayer this morning is that God's good hand of favor will be on this church. Uh, I pray that this church will have favor and a good name in our community. Acts 2.47, praising God and having, what? Hi. Having, Hi. thank you, come and work with me this morning. It's warm in here, don't want you to get so warm and toasty that you go into the land of Nod. <laughs> right in the early chapters of Genesis, well, a chap there went into the land of Nod, and uh, he was in a bad place. Uh, Acts 2.47, praising God and having, favor with all the people the Lord added to their number daily, those who were being saved. So having favor with all the people, that is the people uh, in the community around the church. Because the church is the people. Uh, and with that favor came daily salvations and the growth of the church. Because the church had favor. And so I pray that God's good hand of favor will be on this church and that we will have favor and a good name with God and with the people around us. And I pray that you as an individual uh, and your family uh, uh, may have favor and a good name with God and, and uh, with people. Uh, but if my prayer is to be answered for you and for us, uh, there needs to be intentionality. There's some things you need to do. Uh, you will need to pay attention uh, to some detail and apply it to your life and perhaps change some habits, some of the things you do uh, we did the One Month to Live campaign. The whole idea of that was to change some of your habits and some of the things that you do. And the problem is that now we've moved on from that a couple of weeks now. And that was all fun what we were doing. We set all the goals and did all this and did that and said this and said that. Uh, but now that's behind us, so we'll go back to how we were, right? Well, let's not. Let's not do that. Let's change some habits, change some desires, uh, change some of the things the way we've always done them. It's hard to change from what things we've always done, because that's what we've always done, and we just get into the groove, we wake up, that's what we do. But if we always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got, so we need to change. So I want to talk to you this morning about how to win favour uh, and a good name. And then I want to talk to you about the value of having favour and a good name. I want to start with Proverbs 3, and I'm not quite sure how many verses I gave you up there, so I'm going to read them from here, and then if I want to do some more, I will. As Jenison Franklin says, my sermon, and I'll preach it like I want to. So. <laughs> <laughs> 